Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about inflation, the Federal Reserve and what it all means for trucking. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos, where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased down owner operators and carriers, operating under their own MC authorities, running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about this inflation, what the Federal Reserve has to do with it, what you as truckers can look forward to, how this kind of changes the landscape uh, that we are all uh, working in. Guys, uh, the, what I'm referring to is the Federal Reserve has made a decision not to uh, move forward with uh, rate cuts. And what, what these rate cuts are, I know everybody's talking about it. Basically, the federal government lends money to institutions, right? Lending institutions, banks, credit unions, they lend money to you. Um, equipment financing, your mortgage, car note, your, your credit cards, any sort of financing where you're borrowing money, it costs them money depending on the rate that the bank is paying, that carries over to you, you gotta pay that and then some, right? A premium, uh, and that comes out in your in the interest rate. You know, this is the reason why equipment financing is so incredibly expensive right now. Buying a brand new truck or a trailer is an arm and leg. Same thing with, uh, you know, home buyers. You're looking for a home, you really got to settle for something a lot uh, less than what you had anticipated and what you hoped for initially or have to wait it out until the federal government comes around to actually cutting these rates. We had historically low rates for a very, very long period of time. And uh, now that they're up, it, you know, we're definitely feeling that. Now there's inflation. Uh, inflation has to go down in order for the federal government to move forward with these rate cuts. And inflation came in higher than expected. Now there is uh, your CPI, which is a consumer price index. Uh, it, you know, that came in higher than expected. Then you have your core CPI, which is, uh, it, it excludes food and energy. Once you do that, it actually did quite, quite well. It was actually low. And, and in fact, it came in at, uh, at its lowest point in two and a half years. So that's definitely saying something. Um, however, what we also have to consider, and by the way, about the CPI, if you're interested at all in learning more about how that, you know, more detail about CPI, core CPI, how it functions and, you know, why, uh, how truckers can use that to their advantage in terms of planning and, and looking ahead and where things are going with the economy. I'll leave a card in the corner, take a look at that video, that might be of interest to you. Now, let's move forward with this because just knowing uh, these figures and wh where they came in uh, is not the whole story. What's driving inflation? Currently what we're seeing is housing, okay? Housing is one third of the entire inflation equation and it, it saw the biggest increase. So housing is, going, is, is what's driving inflation ultimately. And uh, what we have to understand is that this is primarily talking about the rental market. A lot of these uh, rental agreements, they're coming due, people have to renew. And because of inflation, prices are coming up to a point where they just cannot afford it. And so this is what's happening. On top of that, what we're seeing is major uh, job cuts. Uh, companies are you know, laying off, firing people left and right. The biggest tech companies, they're doing this. And this is not going to end well for, uh, you know, for inflation, for affordability, and just general quality of life for Americans. What's going to happen when they can't afford uh, the home that they live in, or they, they aren't they gonna have to cut down on all these other expenses in order to afford to have a roof over their head. And so therefore, uh, purchasing is going to go down, orders are going to go down, the amount of freight, volume, uh, tonnage, all of that will go down. And uh, so, you know, there is, a, there is a really good chance here because rate cuts generally take a year uh, until we see any effects from them right? And that's where we're going to just generally see a more robust economy. Now, there is always a chance that uh, the strong American spirit will kick in and will continue spending because up to now, we've that's what we've seen. But, you know, now that uh, the stock market is kind of tanked with, with this sort of news uh, and, you know, with this being a real problem for Americans, uh, you definitely expect a bit of a downturn for the uh, trucking. Although right now we're still good. We're still uh, looking at really good numbers. And as we reported in previous videos, we still expect an improvement around February, right? If you wanna take a look at that video, we actually made a couple of different videos and we came back to some predictions that we'd done 
uh, some time back, came out to be uh, correct, very happy to say. I'll leave cards to every one of these videos in a corner. You can take a look at this, uh, those videos. Now, rate cuts take a long time. So what does this mean for the trucking industry? Uh, besides the fact that all of those indicators will go down, quantity will go down, uh, large companies will flourish and that what normally happens and small companies uh, will flounder. Same thing with uh, you know, your your local grocery store versus your, your Walmarts, right? Um, your uh, mom and pop small uh, trucking companies versus the large big box carriers, all right? So you can expect to see the same in the trucking industry. There are a few things that I want you guys to focus on that you can improve, that you can change, and that will actually benefit your trucking company moving forward. The market's great. You're going to get way better rates. You're going to work with a lot more brokers. You're going to have here more yeses than nos. And if uh, if the market tanks, you're only going to be at the top of the heap doing uh, you know better than everyone below you who did not take the time to follow through on these things. Now, inspections, super, super important. They're very important. They're very hard to get. I understand that it's very difficult, but if you got no inspections, get some. Uh, if you have bad, dirty inspections, get the thing corrected. Get on Safer, pull up your reports, see where you stand, and uh, run the numbers. If you need help, give us a call or text us. I'll get in touch with you. I'll help you with those. Next thing is your carrier assure. Many of you guys know about it. Some of you guys have been rejected, and that's how you found out about it. Super important. This is a service. Uh, it, uh, it does a great job for brokers and for other companies to be able to run their due diligence on you, the carrier, and uh, you want to make sure your information there is correct. You want to correct whatever is incorrect, and you want to get that taken care of. Uh, you can, uh, you, you know, you can make some. You can get them to reanalyze your profile. You can get them to remove information. I wrote a blog post. It actually went into effect today. Uh, just published today. I'll leave a, a little uh, link in the corner in the bottom. Go ahead and take a look at that, and uh, that'll actually walk you through everything. Give you all the ideas on how to improve the score specifically for Carrier Sure. Finally, broker snapshot. It's free. Use it. Go pull your MC. This will give you an idea of what exactly is a broker seeing on your profile. Why are you getting rejected? Take a look at it. Again, broker snapshot. I get nothing from this. Just, you know, it's the free services go out there. Register if you got an MC number and uh, you'll be able to pull some information. Finally, guys, stop this PO nonsense. Get yourself a trailer. Uh, you know, enough is enough. You want to make money you know, rent a dry van, get out there. It'll make up uh, more than make up the difference for the cost. In any case, guys, we'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. I'm going to switch over to camera. I'm going to look over the loads we booked for our customers and I'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. Guys, uh, make sure to stick around to the very end of this video. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a tip regarding inspections and how to uh, make sure that they get through so you can get credit for the clean ones. Uh, you'll always get the credit for the bad ones where there are violations and things like that in place. So make sure to stick around to the very end. Some fantastic numbers. They continue to improve. Uh, this week we have a bunch of vans, a reefer and a flatbed, so a good mix. And uh, let's go ahead and start off with, uh, looks like Manuel's coming out of Peru, Illinois in his dry van, going to St. Elmo, Illinois. It's a little, little quick run here, 33,000 pounds of chocolate cookies, 182 miles booked at 950 bucks, got them to 522 uh, per mile. Then Centralia, Illinois to Edgerton, Kansas, 44.5 on a weight, agricultural goods, 343 miles booked at 2880, got them 373 a mile. Then Adora, Kansas, going to Oregon, Ohio. Very light load, 9,000 pounds of auto parts, uh, auto body parts, 763 miles booked at 1759, got them 231, a loaded mile there. Then right out of Oregon, Ohio, coming out to Ogden, Utah, much longer run. 42,000 pound load of sodium bicarbonate in bags, 2,400 uh, bagged and palletized, 1,622 loaded miles booked at 3,500 bucks, got them 216 a loaded mile, finished off right out of Ogden, coming out to LaSalle, Colorado. It's a 45,000 pound load of fertilizer, 486 miles booked at 1131, got them 233 a mile, did a fantastic job, manual, very, very well done. Tuesday to Tuesday, regular dry van, all within hours, grossed $8,620 on his seven days, 3,396 loaded miles at an average of 254 per loaded mile in a, in a regular dry van. A fantastic week for dry vans. 
Uh, definitely great rate, great growth, great miles, and uh, perfect timing between the, between the loads. The driver did a fantastic job, as well as, of course, dispatcher. Way, uh, way to go, guys, way to go. Next, we're gonna jump onto a reefer coming out of Clackamas, Oregon, coming out to Herlock, uh, Maryland. Mike is the driver. This is a 42,000 pound load of fermented tea bags running 35 degrees continuous on a reefer. 2,879 loaded miles booked at 7,200 bucks. Got them 250 per mile on the dot for a ton of miles. Then out of uh, Harbison, uh, Delaware, took a load to Maple Heights, Ohio. Uh, good market, 40,000 pound load of fresh chicken running 28 degrees on a reefer. 461 miles to finish off his week, $1,100 booked. Got them 239 a mile. Good money uh, coming in, good money coming Coming out. That was it. He ran for six days, uh, Wednesday to Tuesday, $8,300 gross on his reefer. 3,340 loaded miles, ran at 249 a loaded mile average. Excellent growth for just six days of work. Mike, my hat's off to you, sir. Uh, moving on, we have a dry van. Uh, Chris is the driver on this one. It uh, looks like a one pick, three dropper coming out of Commerce City, Colorado, going to Idaho, Pocatello, and two drops in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Uh, lightweight, 10,000 pounds of appliances, 631 miles booked at 1,800 bucks, got him 285 a loaded mile. Then Dubois, Idaho coming out to Boone, Iowa, 42,000 pound load of humic granules, 19 pallet, uh, pallets worth of this stuff, 1,107 loaded miles booked at 2,300 bucks, got him 208 per loaded mile, finished off with Cedar Rapids, Iowa, 41, uh, going to Aurora, Colorado. It's a 41,400 pound load of uh, Pet food, 798 miles booked at 3,000 bucks, finish off the week at 376, a loaded mile on that load. And that was it, seven days on a road, gross $7,100, regular drive in, 2,536 loaded miles, ran that at 280 per loaded mile average. Chris, fantastic job, I mean, really, really good freight and uh, they'll pull you out of Colorado next week, you'll see. Uh, next, we're gonna jump on to a dry van, David's the driver on this one, Aurora, Illinois, coming out to uh, Irvington, Alabama. 36,000 pound load, about 52 pallets of packaging materials. 899 miles, booked at 2,900 bucks, got him an easy 323 a loaded mile. Then out of Axis, Alabama to West Salem, uh, Ohio. 43,000 pound load of polymers, 904 miles, booked at 1,600 bucks. Got him a buck 77 a mile on that one, but then they made up the difference. Coming out of uh, Avon, Ohio, and Medina, Ohio. Two picks, one drop, going to Mariana, Illinois, uh, Florida. It's a 17,000 pound load of retail products coming out to Florida, 954 miles booked at 2,500 bucks, got them 262 a mile. Had a great week, Monday to Monday, 7,000 bucks gross on the dot, 2,757 loaded miles at 254 per loaded mile. Excellent job, sir. Excellent, excellent job. And the last one's gonna be Tariq, uh, Lakewood, Washington to Pasco, Washington. It's a dry van, 40,000 pound load of empty uh, chap pallets, 540 uh, pallets on this one, 237 mile quick run, $900, 380 a loaded mile on that one. And then finished off with Spokane, Washington, going to Miami, Florida, a, a long, long run. So 44,000 pound load of canned vegetables, 3,019 loaded miles booked at 6,000 bucks. Got him buck 99 a loaded mile on that one. He made the list, did a great job, seven days on, uh, on the road. Uh, $6,900 gross, 3,256 loaded miles, ran those at an average of 212 per loaded mile. Excellent job, sir. Welcome back, guys, thanks for sticking around. Guys, for sticking around, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a pro tip. When you get those clean inspections on uh, your DOTs, make sure to submit them. Uh, they're usually in the top left corner, there's a fax number and an email address. Take a clean picture, put it in an email or fax it, make sure in the body of your message, write company name, MC number, hey, thank you so much, appreciate it, send it off, way higher chances that it's actually going to get in the system. In fact, way higher chances because generally the DOT will submit the dirty ones where you have some sort of violation, some sort of warnings, something that did not go right, uh, but they will not do so on the new ones most of the time. So make sure to take care of that so you can get credit for all of those hard earned, uh, clean inspections. Again, all our information is uh, on our blog. Take a look at that. There's a lot of useful content there that will benefit you. Watch our videos. We produce these every single week. We're here for you guys. If you have any questions about our services, we work with leased on owner operators as well as carriers who have their own MC authority. 
Feel free to get in touch with us by calling or texting 801-448-6363 or go to our website at aftdispatch.com. Until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.